how to be I'm in a boy. This is very scary! But all in the name of science! Sorry! Do you want to come back down now? Stop messing time then. Come on. If you think science jobs are all lab coats and PhDs, think again. My name's Zoe and I'm meeting the people behind the jobs that change the world. I'm here at Plymouth Marine Laboratory, ready to spend a day with John McDonald, or Mac to his mates. Can you hoik it up for me, please? <laughs> the man who keeps marine research afloat with military precision. <laughs> Voila, I've got my dry suit on. Now it's time to dive in some ocean science. What we're gonna do now is prep the boat before we take it out. So jump on board. Do you stand on the seat? It's all right, it's not my mum's furniture. <laughs> What we're going to do is a quick check of the engine. The pressure is on. That is magic. Oh, wow. And off we go. This is so cool. We're travelling six miles off the Plymouth coast to discover how Mac helps the scientists monitor the health of our oceans. What actually is your job? I guess I'm kind of like an, an enabler. Oh. I mean, yeah, a facilitator <laughs> if you like. So, you know, there's lots of specialist people. Um, and I'm there to put them in the right position, right time, right place kind of thing, mm -hmm. right equipment to understand more about the ocean. So where are we off to now? We've arrived. We are <laughs> actually in the L4 sampling area. Oh. So th this place has been surveyed since the 80s. We now have these autonomous boys in place that collect that data in situ 24-7. The L4 boy is one of several floating labs out here that are packed with sensors. But like anything exposed to the elements, it needs regular maintenance. I can't believe that this is collecting data because it doesn't look like it could, does it? <laughs> well, if you look up, you can see all the sensors collecting all atmospheric data that then goes to the Met Office. Technology isn't perfect. A lot of this is cutting edge and, you know, you can't just buy it off the shelf and it worked first time. And that's why they need you. Some days, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so when was the last time this one was checked? Are you checking up on me? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, I shouldn't have asked. I didn't plan on checking it myself. Wow! I'm actually on this right now. What do you like with height? The data collected is crucial for understanding marine ecosystems and predicting future changes, which is especially important for understanding the impacts of climate change on coastal ecosystems. Oh God, I can't believe it. I can't swim. For me, this is like such a weird and out the ordinary thing, but. Uh, Everyone else, this is just like what they do. Mac's job is a mix of action and logistics, perfect for someone with his background. I started off in the Royal Marines. I, I was served there for nearly 25 years-ish, and I, I started doing distance learning, and I did um, hydrographic surveying. And what's that? Chart in the ocean, the sea floor. Mm -hmm. I had a real interest in that because I used to do beach reconnaissance. What about your experience in the Royal Marines has led you to be so good at your job here? I guess it's dealing with organised chaos. Mm -hmm. It's having a backup plan. It's just managing expectations, in particular my own, mm -hmm. and just getting everyone to have understanding that things probably aren't going to go the way that they, that they initially planned. Yeah. So what is that cool bit of kit that Ross has got? That's the ROV, a little underwater camera if you like, mm -hmm. and that's going to go underneath the buoy and it's going to check all the moorings because underneath there are more sensors collecting water data, which allows us to better understand ocean currents and marine life. This is all part of making sure that the buoy is okay. Yep, it certainly is today. It's not just the data collection platforms that Mac looks after. He also makes sure crewed vessels like the research vessel Plymouth Quest run smoothly and safely. Also, they can gather ocean data for scientists like Amanda Beasley. What have you guys been up to? You can collect your water samples. And in the water samples, there are things like plankton and we measure nutrient levels and go back to the lab and assess them. Can I have a look? Certainly. When we go back, I'll show you the microscope. OK, I'll see you back at shore. And we're off. And guess who's piloting the rib? Do you want to go faster? Yeah, I can do it. All right. OK, ready? Yeah. Is this very fast for you? <laughs> yes, yes, it's really fast. My arm hurts, but it's really fun. Time to catch up with Amanda to find out why what Mac does really matters. So is this what you were collecting earlier? Yes, it is, yes. It's zooplankton in here, small animal plankton. 
and I'm actually looking for one specific species called Callanus. This particular species is an indicator species, so it's predator as well as prey, mm -hmm. and we can work out where it moves up and down through the water column, where it moves up and down through seasons, just to see if there's anything like ocean acidification or climate change that can affect its movements. So you can learn so much about, say, like climate change just from a tiny little zooplankton. It helps, yes. It all feeds into the bigger picture, but yes, wow. it does. Can I have a look? Of course you can. Wow. I can see their eyes. That's all the decapods. So that's all the baby crab larvae. <gasps> They're really cute, actually, of their little tails. I can really see how the research at Plymouth Marine Laboratory is contributing to the health of our oceans and how Mac is playing a vital role. Mac, thank you for such a lovely day. That's all right. Before I left, I wanted to find out Mac's hopes for the future of marine science. We're doing a lot of damage to the environment. I'd like to, you know, in my lifetime, it'd be great to see us reach a point where we find that harmony where we can coexist without, you know, where we still get what we need, but at the same time, we're not damaging um, the planet. I got into this role through my love for the sea. I lived in Plymouth and did never not want to work on the sea again. So now I get to do what I enjoy at the same time as helping others. Unfortunately, I've got places to be. Oh. Shall, we, um, shall we make a move? It never stops. <laughs> From forces life to navigating ocean science, Mac keeps marine research afloat. Science wouldn't sail without him. I wonder where my next science adventures are going to take me.